Hi, I'm Joe, and this is Aerodyne. Welcome to 30,000 feet above the eastern seaboard of Australia. Today we're going to talk about high altitude flying in the TBM 850, some of the systems that we require to do it, and some of the features that enable it to be done safely. 30,000 feet up here on my own in a single engine aircraft sure seems high, but there are a couple of differences with the aeroplane that allow us to be able to cope with that. Things like the uh, oxygen system, the RVSM altimetry system on board the aircraft, and the pressurisation system, just to name a few. So the first system, and the most important safety system of flying at any altitude is of course the oxygen system. We turn that on before takeoff, both here in the aeroplane, and we have a valve outside the aeroplane that turns the oxygen system on and off at the main bottle. It lives in a pod just at the root of the right wing of the aeroplane. As soon as you fly over 25,000 feet, the requirement changes for oxygen. Below 25,000 feet, you can get away with a normal oxygen mask that just feeds in oxygen slowly. But as soon as you hit 25,000, you need what's called demand oxygen. So it's almost like when you start taking a breath, a valve opens and pushes that oxygen down your throat. The other requirement is that you have some kind of a quick donning system. So if you have a look up to my right here, this is actually my mask on this side of the airplane. I'm going to pull it down. So the way that this would deploy is it would come out of its holder, and then if I squeeze these two tabs in, the harness will actually inflate with oxygen. And it'll restrict and constrict itself as soon as I release these two tabs. So the donning method of the oxygen mask would be, headset comes off, You can hear me through the oxygen mask. I've just flicked a switch. Again, on the main instrument, which allows the mic from inside this oxygen mask to go through to the intercom now. So you can hear every time I take a breath that that oxygen's been forced. So I start a breath very slowly, and as soon as that breath starts, the mask fills with oxygen and uh, I'm able to, to breathe. I'm gonna go back to the normal headset because I can imagine the audio is not quite as good and uh, you don't need to hear the sound of that demand oxygen every time I wanna breathe in. There are three modes on the bottom of the mask. There's normal 100% and emergency. Normal will mix some of the cabin air with the oxygen coming from the oxygen system. If I go to 100%, it will then exclude the cabin air and it will just give me 100% oxygen, an emergency. You can hear this. It actually disengages the demand system and forces oxygen constantly, with the excess being pushed up through the nostrils to clear uh, the smoke goggles, if you're wearing smoke goggles. So the last two are mainly for contaminated air in the cabin or uh, a smoke in the cabin type situation. Two tabs look like this, and then to view it from the top, they're pushed together like that, and then that harness opens uh, right up. So that's a, a basic demonstration of the, uh, the Zodiac uh, oxygen system as fitted to the TBM, and also most airliners have uh, exactly the same system fitted. So with regards to the pre-flight, when it comes to the oxygen system on board the aircraft, there are several things that we test and that we ensure. Firstly, is the external valve and the pressure here on the outside of the aeroplane. We want to make sure that the valve is in the on position. And we also want to make sure that there's enough pressure for uh, our intended flight. Things that would determine how much pressure is required for dispatch are things like how many people I've got on board for the flight, how high I'm flying, how long I'll need to maintain altitude if I'm over water and say it's a uh, fuel critical sector. Once we're inside the aeroplane, we check the following. We have a look at this pressure gauge here, and then our oxygen master switch must be turned on here. The other thing we do is test each of the masks. So you can hear a hissing sound coming out of each mask. The other one's up behind me here. And there it goes. 
the TBM is fitted with a pressurisation system. The pressurisation system bleeds from two points in the engine, a high and a low bleed, depending on a few things, namely torque, temperature, altitude, power setting. A couple of these things can influence this. So there's an auto mode, and there's also a manual mode to put the bleed in high. Sometimes on uh, longer flights, particularly in cold temperatures, it can become very cold in the cabin with the low bleed on. High bleed pushes a little more air through and allows the cabin to warm a little bit. Also, it'll come on automatically at uh, lower torque settings. The pressurisation in the TBM will hold a max delta or differential pressure between the outside and the inside of 6.2 psi which allows us to keep a 10,000 foot equivalent cabin all the way up to a 31,000 feet or flight level 310, which is the service ceiling of the uh, TBM. The final trick up the uh, TBM sleeve, which makes it a absolute high altitude demon, is the uh, RVSM certification. Not all TBMs have the RVSM certification, but this aircraft has been fitted with special equipment that allows it to operate in the RVSM airspace. RVSM stands for Reduced Vertical Separation Minimum. As air gets thinner, altimetry becomes a less precise art. So you've got to have special equipment on board to be able to navigate vertically above 28,000 feet or flight level 280 in most of the world these days. So how do we do that in the TBM? Well, we have two air data computers fed by two separate pedostatic systems driving two Honeywell Digital RVSM certified uh, altimeters. Those altimeters have to be within a certain tolerance of each other at all times. And the autopilot and other systems on the aircraft also need to be certified to an RVSM standard. Once all of those requirements are met, you need to apply for an RVSM certificate or a certificate to operate within RVSM airspace, which is granted in Australia by the Civil Aviation Safety Authority. What this allows us to do is cruise regularly in the airspace between 28 and 31,000 feet. Even though in Australia, flying at these altitudes without RVSM equipment is permitted, as soon as you have an aircraft that's going to be within 1,000 feet of you, you're pushed out of the RVSM airspace as you're non-compliant. Being compliant means that we can stay at 31,000 feet as long as we need to with the same kind of certification of our altimetry equipment as, uh, as an airliner would. This works well for the TBM because if you're talking about long range flying and getting the most out of the range of the aeroplane in terms of fuel economy also, the TBM uh, is at its best at 31,000 feet. Interestingly enough, it's at its fastest at around 26, 27,000. But the nautical miles per gallon in terms of specific fuel burn is a lot less favourable. Folks, hope you enjoyed the run through of the uh, high altitude gear here on the TBM. Look forward to catching you next time and uh, as always, thanks for flying with us.